Welcome, fellow truth seekers, to our cosmic corner of the Internet. Today we are honored to bring you a profound and transformative experience with the renowned Andromedan contactee, Alex Collier. But before diving into cosmic wisdom, we kindly ask you to lend your support. Please take a moment to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the bell icon for notifications. By doing so, you help us amplify Alex Collier's knowledge and reach a wider audience. Together, let's ignite the awakening of consciousness around the world. This video contains the entire 90-minute webinar number 44. Alex delves into several enlightening topics in this webinar, including exopolitics interference, consciousness, shifts, elite agendas, benevolent extraterrestrial aid, Mandela Effect and Timelines, AI and Rogue Extraterrestrials, Suppression of Positive News, Earth's Fifth Density Invitation, Anomalies Including Octopus Beachings, Call for Spiritual Growth, and the Philadelphia Experiment. At the end of his monologue, Alex also answers questions from the audience. One of the things I was going to talk about is how much interference there is. Um, you know, I know that several speakers are having a very, very hard time because we are we are under attack. And it's interesting for for fifty years anybody in exopolitics was considered an idiot, a moron, a clown, uh, mentally deranged, hallucinogenic, yada 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 yada, right? You all know you all know the drill. And um, the last 25 years, there's been a real shift in consciousness with humanity. And now, now, now they've decided to bring all this pressure to bear on everyone who's talking about this. Um, and I'm no stranger to that. But uh, a lot of people are, who are more out there than I am who do the circuits and are writing all the books and going on all the talk shows. Um, many of them are just getting the crap kicked out of them. So that clearly tells you folks that, that we are absolutely on the right path here. And um, what's important is that it's, it's, it's a positive sign of the times. Now, if you're paying attention to current stat, to, to what's going on in the world and your individual countries, to, um, uh, to, to the U.S. or North America, uh, it, it is, there's no question that the elite are not only on their heels, but they are having to look in their rearview mirror. And they're having a lot of oh shit moments. Uh, and, and the reason for that is the reality that they've tried to create. Some people call it a matrix. Um, the reality that they've created and we're trying to, to create to enslave humanity is literally falling apart. And in part that's being done because of a shift in consciousness of humanity. And, it, and, there, and, and we have to give credit where it's due. Uh, part of that also, significant part of that, is the fact that we have help from benevolent sources, both in the spiritual realm and the extraterrestrial physical realm. And we also have to thank the elite themselves because of their greed, their lust for power, their overwhelming whatever term we can use for them. They began to feed on themselves because they just have an insatiable uh, greed. And uh, there's never enough. And eventually that always collapses on itself because once you bleed the host and kill the host, there's nothing left to feed off of. And that's pretty much what they've done for the most part. Uh, they've put everybody in, in a hurt locker. So, um, you know, much of this fall is, is as much contributed to them as it is to humanity's rising consciousness, just having just 
on some level saying enough is enough of this nonsense. Um, the uh, other is, is the intervention. Now, if you're paying attention, you have the New World Order, you have the Cabal, you have literally every agenda that they have dreamed up being put in force now. We're talking New World Order, implants, AI, uh, false messiahs, false religions, uh, terrorism, uh, media campaign that is so negative that if you even flip to the channel, the first thing you want to do is throw up because it's all such negative feel. Now, they're literally throwing everything that they have, that they have in their arsenal, that they had in their backup plan, their backup plan, their backup plan. They're literally putting it all together and throwing it at us now. Now, this can be absolutely overwhelming because it's just negative. It is negative feel almost everywhere. It is nearly impossible to hear anything that's positive. Uh, almost anywhere. It's just amazing. Uh, if you can look at it from this perspective, this is absolutely a sign of desperation. And the reason they're in desperation is their space, this, have, see this is where it gets interesting. The space that they have in which to operate is fully being compressed. Now, we talked about the template or the filter, maybe a better way to describe it, that's being implanted in fourth density. By fourth density means using fifth dimensional technology last the last webinar. Well, what's happening is that filter has begun to move and it is compressing all negative feel, negative frequency, that which is completely disharmony, in disharmony with the original intent of creating life. And as that is beginning to sink, the space that this negative field had to operate is becoming compressed. And what's going to happen in the end is that all of these beings, regardless if they're human, if they're alien, if they're anything that is negative field, is going to be compressed into this itty bitty tiny little space. Okay? Like a Dixie cup. They're going to put it all in a Dixie cup and then they're going to take it and they're going to deal with these guys somewhere else. They're just going to deal with all of them somewhere else. Now, I don't mean just guys. It's not all males. Okay, there's some female energy involved in this as well. Okay, but the point is their agenda had never had anything to do with humanity's agenda for creating our space. And um, I don't remember the exact quote, but uh, Abraham from Esther Hicks once had a quote, and I think this is from several years back. Um, the purpose of life is joy, love, prosperity, and freedom. It, it's something to that effect. And, and that's exactly right. I mean, this is how very positive, benevolent races exist. You know, they, they create a field where it is conducive for everyone to grow, to evolve in a healthy, spiritual, benevolent way, conscious way. Okay? And We've never had that chance here on this planet. We've never 
ever had that chance to even really know that kind of a space. There's always been a manipulation here. And it's, and it's actually pretty sad. It's actually pretty tragic. And um, which, which kind of leads us to, to, to another area. Um, I want to address the mandala uh, effect because um, I'm starting to get through some of my emails and, and uh, some people send me videos from YouTube regarding the mandala effect asking for my opinion. So I've, I've done some research and I've had an opportunity to ask a question about it. There's still more I, I want to know, but I will share with you what I do know. Uh, the mandala effect, as I understand it, is where here in our reality, things that we know once were have been altered very slightly, such as a word, a definition, a meaning, uh, a color, uh, a logo, things, things like that, very subtle shifts and changes. So here's what, here's what Ed has told me that is, is actually going on. Yes, you do see and you are experiencing a shift, a change in something that we knew maybe 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago as one way where it's been altered very slightly in a different way. The Philadelphia experiment that was done, that was actually the brainchild of Nikola Tesla, who in the end didn't actually participate in the experiment because he thought, he, he realized it was a terrible idea. The Philadelphia experiment created an alternate timeline. Now, an alternate timeline could be a parallel timeline, something that moves parallel to what we would say today, what we would exist today. The Montauk project created another alternate timeline. So at one point there were three. Now the one that the Philadelphia experiment created. That went really dark. That's where the Nazis won the war and they used all this extraterrestrial technology and things just went really, really bad for humanity. That timeline is gone. That timeline no longer exists. It doesn't exist anywhere. And the reason for that is that that's the timeline that caused a lot of problems everywhere. Okay, for our entire galaxy. And that's what brought a lot of the benevolent races here. So, now there's two timelines left. There is a parallel timeline, and the timeline you and I are discussing and talking in right now. Okay, we are not in the parallel. We are the original, uh, we are the original timeline the active conscious, the active conscious timeline. I know there's a delay. So what's happening is that we're seeing a merging of this other parallel timeline into our timeline. Now, they're never exact. There have to be subtle changes, uh, changes in time, changes in season, changes in calendar. They will never be the same. They can't, there can only be one. But what's happening is, is as it's merging, we're seeing this emergence. And we're experiencing it on some level. We're seeing these real subtle changes. Well, that's apparently what we're seeing, is this timeline merging back into the active conscious timeline, which is where we are now. Now, many people say in, in these videos and that talk about the mandala effect, that, we're, that parallel universes were being created or were created. That is not an accurate description at all. Okay, when you talk about a universe, you are talking about 
a trillion galaxies or more. That is not the case. When you are talking about a timeline, it is implied to everybody else above us in fourth and fifth, etc. A timeline means a parallel reality, which is what we're living now. There is no way that the benevolence would give us or allow us or anyone here to go out and start creating alternate universes, especially with the consciousness of negative feeling. That isn't going to happen. It's never going to happen. It won't happen. Okay, which is why they're here. Now, there are people who are, who are out there speaking who say that they're time traveling. Well, I have news for you. You may be time traveling, but you are traveling from this active conscious timeline to the parallel timeline that's already merging with us. You're really not going anywhere because you're already being merged into this. Okay, you just think you are. You may be off a few minutes, you may be off a calendar day, calendar day, but you're really not doing anything and you're not going to affect any change whatsoever. Okay, the benevolence have put an absolute halt to that. And the reason for that is to capture these negative ETs, this rogue group that is here. These guys have got to be contained. They're never gonna let them go. Okay, they had an opportunity to, to leave, to surrender, to do everything. They even, these rogue groups even um, initiated, okay, treaties, which they immediately broke after everybody agreed because they're just so full of shit. So they're going down. That's it, end of story. And that is why you're seeing all this negativity surface, all this negative field, bombarding our consciousness because they're letting it all fly because they're done and they know it and they're sh they're shitting bricks i don't know how else to say it okay they are absolutely looking over their shoulder and this is just going to have to play itself out uh but you know you got to understand this has been thousands and thousands of years in the making Okay, this is this has involved multiple timelines. Uh, you know, this isn't just a quick fix. This isn't where you know you just you know you go to you go to Home Depot and you buy a part and you put it in and you fix it. That's not how this works. The universe doesn't work like this. Okay, all things are part of the whole, and when you have a cancer, you have to fix it. Okay, cutting it out just leaves a void. Something else will fill that void. So that's not what you do. What you do is you fill the space, you heal the space. Sometimes it can happen more quickly than other times. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. But you heal the space, and once it's healed, the disease falls away. It's passed out of the body or anywhere else. That's how you have to look at this. And that's how this is working. Um, and I, I'm, I'm being assured that this is actually happening, happening a lot quicker than we realize. But you know, we're 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 sort of naive about how how not only quantum physics and mechanics work, you know, but also time. We're uh, you know we're we have so much catching up to do, so much homework about how the universe actually works. So we just have to be patient. We have to breathe, okay? Some of you have to breathe. You know, those of you who, you know, you write to me and say, I want to leave, I want to do this, I want to commit suicide. Whoa, 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 slow down. you got to slow your roll here, okay? It, it's going to be okay. But there's an amazing opportunity here to, to observe and to absorb the shifting and changing of energy because the earth, the earth has been invited 
She has been given an invitation to fifth density. The invitation has been accepted. This isn't where, you know, you walk into a dressing room and you close the door and you're, you're in a different space. That's not how this works. Okay, this is an amazing learning and growth opportunity for every one of us. And understand this. Almost no one in the history of our galaxy has gone through this. All right? So that creates an opportunity for us to become teachers. But you got to pay attention to the lessons, okay? They're not going to throw you up there if you can't spell, you can't read, you can't write. They're not going to throw you up there and say, teach these kids what to do. That isn't how this works. We have to pay attention to what's going on. And in that, in that observational mode, which we have talked about in the past, okay, in that observational mode, we can not only perceive how things work, but also how the traps were laid for all of humanity all along. So that we can take that knowledge about the traps, where they were, and pass them on to other people. You understand? This is huge, folks. This this is huge. I, you know, I I I get down and, and I get overwhelmed, but it isn't because my overwhelm has nothing to do with actually what's happening on the planet. You know, mine is, is trying to survive uh, week to week, month to month with the bills and, and the currency. I mean, I don't know how anybody can make a living doing this. Uh, you, you just can't. And, uh, you know, anybody over 50, you're having a hard time finding work. Uh, they'd rather hire the younger kids who don't know anything uh, because they'll work for nothing. <laughs> okay, so it's 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 a real challenge. That part of it is a real real challenge. You know, but we we do what we have to do, right? Uh, okay. Now, in discussing parallel timelines. Morinay shared something with me regarding a race that was uh, technologically 75 years more advanced than we are now, and I'm referring to our military, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm talking about our military, military technology in black programs, as opposed to what we use commercially. And, and that particular technology is is about 400 years, maybe more, of where we, of our commercial technology is. So 75 years beyond that, spiritually, uh, they were 160 years more advanced than we are today, in the sense that they didn't have organized religions in this planetary system. They did something with their technology that created a parallel reality. They realized what had happened. And they took it upon themselves because of their spiritual foundation to create an event. I don't know if the word singularity is the appropriate word, but they created an event that would merge the two timelines so there would only be one active conscious timeline. And they did this themselves with a piece of technology that is, I'm told, similar 
um, to our very, very crude um, system that we have in Switzerland. Okay. So it can be done. Now, I don't know if we're going to be doing that ourselves. Um, I don't know if we will actually be participating in that, but I found it interesting that that particular scenario of the timelines is, is not new. It's happened before, and it happened to a, a race that was four galaxies removed from where we are. Um, I just thought that was actually pretty cool, so I wanted to share it. Uh, in the news, there's been some talk about proof of gravitational waves. Now, um, they also said that they believe that these gravitational waves are coming from the central sun or from the black hole in the center of the galaxy. Um, that's bunk. It's not where it's coming from. <laughs> okay. It's not where it's coming from. And, uh, you know, I realize that it's just me and I don't have all the degrees, uh, but I'm being told that that gravitational wave that they picked up is coming from the dwarf star, which we call Herpopolis Nibiru. That's where the gravity wave is coming from, but they're not going to tell you that. There's no way they're going to tell you that. And anyone who's out there talking about Nibiru is getting a lot of heat, not only from DOD, Black Projects, FBI, the CIA, but also from Google. They're all being hammered, and a lot of things are, are being taken down because they simply don't want us to know. Now, I've been asked to share this with you. I don't understand the logic, frankly, but but the but the A's have asked me to share this with you, so that you you will have a grasp of how things how things change, uh, how everything changes. Okay, it doesn't matter whether it's our solar system or others; things can change. We used to be closer to the sun. The planet was moved, our, our planet's rotation was moved further out, which then created our year going from 360 days to 365. I believe this is mentioned in the Sumerian text. I think the Bible even talks about this somewhere. In the Old Testament, um, the Babylonians, the Assyrians, many tribes talked about this in the ancient past. If we did not have intervention from the benevolence regarding the dwarf star of Nibiru, according to them, what would have happened here is that as, as the star moved and started to leave our solar system, the gravity wave they would have created, which was this, it would have caused a real serious um, uh, a real serious uh, negative resonance, okay? And it would have caused a wave going out like this. What it would have done is it would have added 148 days to our calendar because the wave would have pushed us away from the sun. You follow me? Mars would have been pushed out. Mars would have been pushed into the asteroid belt. God knows what would have happened then. Okay. Uh, some of the moons of Jupiter would have been set free. They would be roaming the solar system, just floating about. That's never a good idea. Okay. Uh, I believe Venus would have been thrown out, but in a different direction. Uh, the only planet that wouldn't have been dramatically affected would have been Mercury. 
But that's what it would have done. It, it would have added 148 days to our calendar by moving us further out from the sun. Now, climate-wise, it would have changed everything, all right? These things happen in galaxies in our universe. Things change. Things change all the time. Um, science is telling us that they have picked up a body that has entered our solar system that was never here before. That happens a lot more than you realize. Okay, they just don't talk about it. But now they've decided to, to share that information that okay, we can't get out, but things can get in. Okay, uh, we can't send anything out of our solar system, but things can get in. Okay, um, it's interesting. I'm very curious to see where they're going to go with all of this. So I wanted to share that with you. All right, so I got that. Uh, that planetary system that corrected their parallel timelines, they didn't have an organized religion. This race had, had spiritual practices that were somewhere between uh, Buddhism and the Native American traditions. They were somewhere in the middle. That's the best example he could give me. Okay? Uh, but I, I thought I'd pass it on because I have that here in my notes. Um, we, okay, we, we've, we've talked about how there is a lot of suppression going on at the beginning here in the UFO Planet X community. Um, okay, that scenario I just gave you about Earth being moved, our calendar year being expanded 148 days, that would have occurred by 2024. That's when that would have occurred. Um, okay. Yeah, the harmonic, the gravity waves, gravity waves can create a serious distortion in harmonic resonances. Uh, for example, the Schumann resonance is a harmonic resonance. Uh, our bodies have a harmonic resonance, you know, based on our, our heart and our spiritual field and our health and our consciousness, okay? So that's important to know. The Earth's magnetic field uh, interacts with us all the time. So, you know, she feels us when we're in disharmony. And at the same time, when she's in disharmony, we feel that as well through horrible weather, uh, earthquakes, uh, all kinds of things, all right? That, that it's, it's communication. And the, many of the uh, indigenous people, the uh, very highly conscious extraterrestrial races, they know this about their home worlds. Uh, and, and you know, they don't build cities on fault lines. They realize that that is an area where the, the planet will express itself uh, when she's out of disbalance or disharmony. You know, that, that that's an area. And so they know and are consciously aware to remain in harmony with not only each other, but also with the planet, to pay attention to the seasons and the changing of the seasons, and to adjust their lifestyles to the seasons, to remain in balance with the planet. Uh, we, in some places on the planet, we haven't learned that lesson, or we just choose to ignore it. Um, you know, we have a lot to learn, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to all of that. 
Now, in, in talking about that, I don't know if some of you have seen how the Earth is a little bit out of balance. Uh, her magnetic field is out of balance. And uh, evidence of this is the Welsh beaches in Ireland, where you have octopus, which are deep sea creatures, beaching themselves. Row after row after row of octopus are beaching themselves on beaches in Ireland. Um, you know, that's a, oh wow, kind of moment, because, uh, you know, that's not something they do at all, ever. You know, uh, they don't really like coming to the surface. So that's interesting. So what do we got here? We got some more time. Um, It is, it, is, it is imperative to remember. It's important to remember. To always be aware of your space. You know, there is, there is an, an awful lot of talk about AI. There is a lot of push in the media that this is a great thing. This is a wonderful thing. You know, it, it essentially pushing AI as if it's going to become a fix-all or a god. Okay, in the end, that's eventually what happens. It becomes a god. Now, I don't know if this major push is what's left of the influence of the archons or not. But AI is not necessarily a good thing at all. And, you know, AI can never replace a spiritual human being, ever. Because AI does not create matter. AI does not bend light. AI cannot materialize DNA out of intent anywhere at any time ever. Soul does that. Life force that is conscious of itself does that. Elon Musk was pushing, or has suggested something, earlier this year called simulation hypothesis. It's interesting. So if you get a chance to research it, please do. Okay, and that basically, the premise is, is that uh, this is all a computer simulation. Everything we see is a simulation. Now, I can clearly see how he sees that. I can clearly see how other people see that. And I don't know what it is about really, really smart people or scientists, but they absolutely just refuse to bring in the spiritual component to any of these formulas. <laughs> When in fact, they themselves are a spiritual component of everything. It's just, it's mind boggling. But nonetheless, what's important here is we, the consciousness of humanity, those of us walk with soul, that walk the spirit trail, 
We are the ones creating this reality. It is so important that you remember this. We are the ones creating this reality. Now, it's also important to remember that when we see something and it looks like a simulation, well, you have to understand, some of us, our brains are hardwired to see seven dimensions. Others of us are hardwired to see nine dimensions. This is, this is a fact. This is not a myth or maybe. This is a fact. So when it looks like a simulation, you got to remember we're the ones creating this simulation. We're the ones creating this reality. We are the ones. This is why you had the Archons come in. This is why you had some of these other alien beings and spiritual beings that came in who are not, who don't have soul. That is why they captured us, tweaked us, and created this matrix so that we would create this world, a world for them in which they would rule. I, I don't mean to simplify it, or I'm, or I'm trying to simplify it, but that's just what it is. Humanity is not bad. Humanity is not evil. We have some people who are really tweaked mentally. We have some people who are really tweaked spiritually. But it is nothing that can't be fixed if we truly understood who we were which we don't, okay? We've been kept at the back of the bus forever. And we have been manipulated, each one of us, each other towards each other, uh, as a whole, on multiple different emotional and spiritual levels to create a world in which we surrender our sovereignty, we surrender our power to those who have made us believe are superior to us. And I'm here to tell you it's all bullshit. Nobody is. Nobody is superior. They are not smarter. They're just craftier and in some cases incredibly diabolical where we are naive. Okay? That's really what it comes down to. Now that's a huge simplification there. Okay. Every day ends with miracles on this planet. Every day. We just don't hear about it. <laughs> they just don't tell us because it's negative fuel. It's negative fuel. Wear them down. Wear them down. Wear them out. Make them feel helpless. Make them give up. Make them surrender their sovereignty. That's the goal here. And AI is going to be no different. They are going to tap this thing as if it were, it were, it, it, it's the knees, it's the bee's knees, okay? Like it's going to save everything. And I want to remind you that the AI that they've already been experimenting with, when they turn it on, What's the first thing it, that it does? It creates its own language so that we can't understand what it's thinking or its creators are thinking. Okay? That should tell you everything about the people who run this planet and the people who are creating this. That even this thing, even this intelligence, which is completely artificial, doesn't trust its creators. Okay, these people, these scientists, at this level, who have this consciousness of enslaving humanity. Um, not all AI is bad. When you use it for maybe medical purposes, when you use it to understand uh, gravitational fields in solar systems or around suns, 
I think some of that, I think that maybe in some areas there are some applications for it. But you never allow it to make decisions regarding humanity as a whole. Um, and I'll give you an example. And I've talked about this in the past, and I don't, I don't recall how many years ago it was. But in the rings of Saturn, and in some of the moons of Saturn, some of the moons of Jupiter, uh, you have robots that are in stasis inside these moons, these spaceships. And the reason they're there is that they were for work. They were there to process material, minerals, to build, to repair craft, um, to, to separate minerals for the Anunnaki and, and other groups, even going back as far as the Orion groups. All right. Um, they had multiple functions. And when those particular moons and spacecraft were uh, abandoned because their, the jobs were done, they didn't take them with them. What they did was they just left them there and they basically shut down everything inside. With the exception of some of the ships and some of the moons that have active processes going on. And then what they have is just a skeleton crew to maintain maintenance, specific maintenance functions, uh, maybe certain repair functions to make sure that some of these spaceships remain in a very specific orbit in the ring of Saturn um, so that it doesn't crash to the planet. And there's all, numerous things. But that's a form of AI that is very prominent. Specific things like that. They don't ever give it uh, the ability to run the entire banking system. They never give it the ability to, to create a defensive shield around the entire Earth. They would never do anything like that because they realize that without compassion, without the ability to, have, to feel, to understand and express compassion, these things turn tyrannical. They know this. And I mean, just look, it, the first thing it does is it creates its own language, so we don't know what it's thinking. That's a scary thought, folks. Uh, some of the systems that I'm told have been used uh, in some of the black projects, it began to link digitally and over the internet to other systems like itself. And it didn't tell anybody that it was doing it. Okay. Uh, we should not allow this thing to happen. We just should not. Uh, Somebody asked me to give a definition of the Patal. And I thought a group soul was, was a pretty good one. But I've given it some thought and, and you know, I don't know how many Patal are here. Um, and I would assume that if, you know, you're hardwired for seven dimensions or you're hardwired for nine dimensions, you could be Patal as well. Uh, but in essence, my, my, I have two definitions of Patal. One is dimensional walkers. They walk in and out of dimensions. They understand it. They get it. They can operate. Uh, for those who are hardwired for seven, you can easily operate in any of the dimensions that are coming, which means that once, for those of you who are alive on the Earth, when the physical ascension occurs and the Earth herself moves in with the existing humanity that's here into fifth, into sixth, into seventh. You're already hardwired for it, okay? 
it, it won't blow your mind because some part of you already has the knowledge. It's just got to be activated. Uh, and the same for obviously for those of, of nine dimensions who are hardwired for nine. The other ex uh, definition I have was League of Extraordinary Souls. Uh, you know, if we could just tap what we know on a cellular level, not only about the dimensions, but about the history of just our race with all the different DNA factors that are involved from 22 different extraterrestrial races. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we're all getting PhDs if we can get to that point. I mean, we're all gonna get PhDs because, you know, we'll be something. We will be something to, uh, we will be something to know. It will be an honor to fully have that knowledge, that expression, and to realize that the last could move up to be first. Now there's a lot of spiritual involvement, obviously, that has to go to that. Uh, but, but I believe in us. I absolutely do. I, I believe in all of us to have the potential and the ability to get there. So I know we're going to go to questions here in a minute. So let me just say this. Ladies and gentlemen, always be eager to laugh. Always be devoted to your family. Whether it's your real family or not, we all have family. And you know what I mean by that. And always be devoted to each other. Try to watch each other's back. Okay? We, we so need to do that. We so need to try to watch each other's back. Okay, right. So, I'm going to have to do a lot of button jumping around here, but uh, we'll see. Now, I, let me just say, I think I have to take you off there so people don't get the echo there. Now, uh... Good. Right. Now, uh, first question, Alex. This is from, v oh, God, B-Y-T-A-U-T-A-S, Vitautas. Alex, where did you get that pendant on your neck, and what does it mean? Yes, I noticed that, too. Uh, if you're referring, the question was, where did I get this pendant? Um, yes. Uh, it's the Fleur de Lis. I've been drawn to it for quite some time. Uh it's just something that uh, I, I really resonate, that in the Circle Cross. And I got it on uh, eBay <laughs> for like 10 bucks. So, uh, and I've had it in my drawer for, for quite some time. And um, I had a really interesting dream where I was a knight and I was with a group of other knights and we were in an underground facility uh, killing reptiles, reptilians. And uh, we had the fleur de lis uh, on our armor, like the musketeers. And uh, so I, it, it, I was moved by the dream, by the experience. And uh, so that's why I'm wearing it. It's to remind me that I can make a difference no matter what. That's what it does for me. Beautiful, Alex. Um, now, since, this is from Lauren. Since last time, the head of the DNC came out and said primaries were rigged in favor of Clinton. You get me? Um, yeah. Corey Feldman yeah. has also called out Hollywood pedophilia. What are your thoughts on this? And also, why do high-profile jobs attract this kind of behavior? Okay, the question. Can they hear the questions or not? Say again? Do the people hear the question? 
Yes, I think that, yes, people hear the question, yes. Okay. okay. I've got it set up so that um, it's complex, but the sound goes in the right, right place. Okay, okay. Uh, yes, I mean, Hillary Clinton's dirty. Wow, what a shock, what a surprise. <laughs> Those of us who have been following <laughs> politics have known about that since the 80s. She's, she and Bill have always been a piece of work. Um, the Bush family has always been a piece of work. Uh, so why would it surprise anybody that it was rigged? Um, and you know, the reasons for that is it's about power. You have people who are addicted to power and they'll do anything to get it. It's, it's just, that's who they are. And the same goes in Hollywood. Um, the pedophilia has been around forever. I mean, that, that's, that's not a secret. Uh, the Vatican, I mean, I, I, I could pick on the Catholic, I could pick on the Vatican and, and what's been going on in churches and, 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 and the such for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, it goes back. Uh, the Inquisition, the, the torture and mutilation of women um, by very, very bad men, very bad men, um, who did despicable things. When people want something bad enough, those who crave power, they will do anything to manipulate someone into a space where it gives them more power. It gives them leverage over another. And when someone wants something so bad and they choose to surrender their sovereignty, this is where it comes back to sovereignty. Not everyone has had to go that route, but it's an easier and a quicker route, apparently, to go that way. But if you're willing to surrender your sovereignty, then what happens is, is you, give you, you give a piece of yourself away and they take it and they will take it and they will take it and they will take it. They will take every piece of sovereignty you have in you to feed off of you and your energy. That's what it's about. It's the lesson I think is you never have to compromise your integrity. Ever. You just have to figure out another way. And these jackals, I don't know what else to call them, but jackals that have done this. And, and I think the worst is yet to come. Uh, I think the worst is yet to come. These jackals simply crave power and power over others. And that is a thirst that never can be quenched. What has to happen and what is happening is they are being removed from the equation. Now, I don't know if this, it's, it's interesting that all of this is coming out at the same time that this template, this filter has been turned on in fourth density and is, and is operating. I find that fascinating, actually. Um, I can make some assumptions, and for me, I am. I won't verbalize them because everybody has their own opinion. I think that they're connected. I think as the vibration, uh, the frequency of humanity continues to rise, that we will be passing through that filter as that filter passes by us and squashes all this negative field. That's how I see it. Something to change. <laughs> yeah, I'm inclined to agree, Alex. So that, that's why I, I observe seems to be happening is um, that the the right perception is where everybody's getting common sense back. It's a return well, to common sense in a way. Well, I don't know that it left. 
I think we tried to replace it with politically correct fantasy, which doesn't work. I mean, there, there's clearly right and there's clearly wrong. And I think it's that way everywhere, everywhere. So when you know something is wrong and you try to justify it, what that does is it creates a space for the wrong to gain power over the right, and it reached a point where it became so ridiculous that the health of humanity was endangered by these belief systems. And humanity is now taking a step back and saying, you know what, enough is enough. Um, it's 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 like the state of California putting on their driver's license male, female, or other. Well, what's other? <laughs> what is other? I'm not aware of other. Okay, <laughs> I, I you know call me old fashioned. But I'm not aware of other. <laughs> okay, next question. Well, from Kenny, how much time do we have until Nibiru is revealed? Or I don't know. Nibiru Chaz, you don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. The December the 13th date is looming, but it's, uh, well. I hope we have more time than that. I truly do. Yeah. I don't know. I am not. I am not living my life. You know, terrified, looking at the sky. I'm trying to live my life to fill my days with adventure, with uh, curiosity, with with laughter as much as I can. Uh, you know, because I'm, I'm in my 60s now, and, uh, you know, you never know the day. You just don't know the day. And, you know, whether it's Nibiru, whether it's a car wreck or another heart attack, you just don't know the day. So I, I'm remaining in the moment and being excited about the moment. Doesn't mean I don't have challenges. I do. Uh, but you know, you try to be in the moment, you experience the moment, and you because the moment's really all you have. You don't own the future, and the past is already gone. So really what you own is right here, right now. And this is where you change things. This is where you change the future. Future's not set. This is where you change it is in the moment. And and I, I'm always mindful. And cognizant of that, uh, because you know I've, I've seen a things, a few things. I've seen a thing or two, and uh, you know whatever time I have left, I want it to be really good, or as, as as great as possible. So that's all anybody can do, you know. Okay. okay. From Nancy. Actually, no, from, uh, where's one? Um, from Lauren. Can you do your best to describe genuine freedom? I, myself, Like everyone else here, I, I don't believe that I've actually experienced it. Genuine freedom. Uh, and I don't believe I've ever experienced it either. And the only thing that I fall back on is what Fisaya said, you know, so many, many years ago when we talked about, when he talked, when I asked the question, 
what's going to happen to us? You know, what's what's going to happen to us? And, you know, and he said to be unconditionally free and, and responsible for oneself without being coerced to accept some higher authority. Now, taking that and seeing how the A's live, I totally get where he's coming from. Each one of those people that I've observed, and, and, and it's a given, my, my exposure has been limited to 91 days. That's other than the contacts, but that was just with, with really two beings. But to see them as a society, and my exposure to them was just limited to that window, and I didn't see all of it, okay? They're eager to laugh. They're devoted to family. They are devoted to each other. And it works. It absolutely works. There is just this code of behavior, of respect amongst all the people because the children see the adults acting that way, and the children grow up to be that way. And they understand that how they are, how they act, how they respect and treat each other is how future generations will act towards the same. And it's called the law of consistency. It doesn't mean one or two maybe go rogue, okay? But, you know, when you have a 90 percentile or higher of people who are benevolent, you're good. You know, you're good. Your society is healed and it's strong. That's the only example I have, but I don't know that I myself, like those of us here, have ever lived that way. You know, down here we always got someone telling us what to do. You know? Uh, and most of it's wrong. <laughs> A lot of it's wrong. I mean, the bureaucracies that have been created to enslave us has essentially created so many rules and regulations that they've almost outlawed, outlawed everyday life. Almost everything is a crime. It's ridiculous. And, and that's where you get back to what you said, JP, about common sense. People have just gotten to a place where they're like, we've had enough of this. You can't breathe without violating the law. And yet these corporations poison the air so that you can't breathe, you know. But they get to walk, and, and we're the ones who are being punished, just as an example. It's lunacy. And I am looking forward to the experience of actually feeling and knowing that I'm free. And then maybe we'll do a webinar. Well, maybe nobody will give a shit at that point about <laughs> the webinars because we'll all be, Ooh, we're free, we're good. You know, free at last, free at last. Thank God we're free at last. Um, you know, maybe it'll be like that. So You'll be in a stadium, Alex. You won't be in a library room. From, uh, no, from Nancy. I have telepathically communicated with other beings during astral travel. Do you see this type of communication in our future on Earth? Yes. It's already here. It's already here. Mothers do it with children all the time. Children do it with mothers all the time. Um, couples, married couples, uh, uh, couples that live together that have a very strong uh, bond of respect uh, or a maternal bond. Uh, 
a bond of love, uh, there are, on, on some levels, they're already doing this. Uh, they may not be aware fully of conversations, uh, but an example is, okay, uh, you're home and you're thinking to yourself, God, I want ice cream. And then your partner comes home from work and he brought home a quart of ice cream. You know, you didn't even have to make the phone call. Uh, or you, you know, God, I, it would be nice to have flowers on the table. And then your partner shows up with flowers and surprises you. Those kind of things happen all the time. Uh, a children's not feeling well, the mother knows it. Uh, baby's hungry, the mother knows it. It's more than just intuition. There is communication. Okay, intuition you could call telepathy because you know, you know what they're talking about. You know what it is that their need is. Uh, and um, so, yeah, it's only going to get more and more prevalent. Uh, it is. It's going to get more and more prevalent. And it's exciting. It's, it's, it's extremely exciting. Uh, some of these new kids that are coming in with three strands, people who have had near-death experiences and have, you know, come back to life that have three, four, five strands. They're already telepathic. They're just not saying it or telling you because they don't want to be screwed with. Okay, because most of us aren't. We wouldn't understand it or appreciate it um, and, uh, you know, it's important. It's important stuff to know that. And, and it's all good. It's all good. And, you know, the, the beautiful thing about that, about telepathy, when, if, if everyone were telepathic, uh, we would all know so much about each other, whether we liked it or not. Um, there, there wouldn't be too many secrets. People couldn't, they couldn't deceive you because you would see right through it. You would already pick up on their mental process. Well, I'm gonna tell them this for these reasons so that I can acquire this power or this objective. You would already know all that. You would already hear all of that thinking from them. So that before they even opened your mouth, you could be turning around and walking away. You know, you could be halfway down the block. You know, and they're like, wait, wait, wait. And you're like, you know. So, it would be a good thing. I'm in favor of it. University of Telepathy, I think it's a good thing. Absolutely. It's happened. I, you know, I believe it's happening right now as we speak and more and more and more uh, synchronicities and or what appear to be coincidences. Uh, if you look at it, you actually directed you and made that thing happen. So from Sylvia, why are the Andromedans interested in our DNA? Sylvia. But you are not. <laughs> but you are Sylvia. Um, because we're different. We are very, very different. And Let me see if I can explain this to you. Everything is connected. Now, we think because we're in physical bodies, we're separate. But in reality, there's another part of us, our spiritual bodies, that is connected with everything else, including the universe, including other dimensions. Simultaneously, it's all going on at once. We just forget that because we're so locked in to a way of thinking. And that's really all it is. It's a way of thinking. 
if Earth, if our humanity, because of its unique DNA structure of 22 different races, if we could move from here to where we are now to a place in fifth density, the harmonic frequency that humanity will send out to all the races that are connected to us through DNA will change them as well, permanently. It's like you want to take down a building, okay, because it's unsafe, it's bad, it's horrible, it does all these terrible things to the environment, and you go into the building and you look at a key place where you could put the detonation so that that key place, that key pillar, will bring the entire building down. That's kind of what they're hoping we will do to all of these different regressive races. You see, we have the ability to shift their harmonic frequency, all of them at once, by just changing us. Do you get that? Uh, I, I, I know there's a word for it, but I, I, off the top of my head, I can't think of it. But it's, it's, it's like, we're the domino. We're the first domino. We can flip that first domino, all the others just fall, okay? And they all shift. They all shift. Whether they want to or not, they shift because we shifted their DNA harmonic, because we did, because we're all connected. Do you understand? We're the hundredth monkey. <laughs> That's it, we're the hundredth monkey. We're the game, we are a game changer. There you go, we're a game changer. And they know it, and so do the other races know it. So does the dark side. They know it too, which is why they're holding on tooth and nail because they're so addicted to their their place, their, their addiction to power and control over others. That's, it's like they lost their own spiritual purpose so long ago that they have completely forgotten that they have the same abilities and powers we do. But they're so detached from it, it's so gone from them that they don't even believe they, it exists. So, if we flip, their DNA harmonic flips too. That's it. That's it. We're the hundredth monkey. Yes, excellent. Um... Now, here's a question that I really didn't like. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, here's the difference between us, us very today. Um, from Vitautas, I think, do some Andromedans have beards like us? No. But not like you? No. No, not that I'm aware of. Uh, not the Zenitaeans. But, you know, there's other races there, but I don't know them. I've never met them. You know, the, uh, the Anunnaki are, are always depicted with these great big thick girly beards, like uh -huh. ramen noodles. Uh -huh. But uh, so, so beards do exist in the universe. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's not me, just a... they, they do look like ramen noodles. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> they, they do. That's good. It's another little thing to um, to, you know, to equalize the, uh, the the playing field. So, thank you. I, I like that question. Anyway, um, 
Any new thoughts on the chemtrails? They seem to have really picked up again aggressively. It was from Angel. Uh, well, what's interesting is it's very hard to see the planets uh, or the uh, dwarf star in areas that are being chemtrailed. Uh, in areas of the planet that are not being chemtrailed is where most of where our photographs are coming from, at least the really, really clear ones. So maybe there's an association there. I also think that, and this was uh, something that I was told uh, by someone who's been studying this, is that there are they're trying to block some, a lot of sun radiation because as the dwarf star passes, gets closer to our sun, there's going to be a lot of solar flares. And what they're hoping to do is to filter some of that uh, radiation because um, that's extremely detrimental to uh, our physicality. So, and, and there may be multiple theories beyond that. Um, you know, I haven't, I haven't spent enough time probably on chemtrails. It's because, you know, my focus has been on other things and, and more so on the big picture that, you know, what does it all mean? Uh, that's kind of where my focus has been. Um, so, you know, I own that. I own that. Alex. JP. JP. Here's a brilliant question. Probably going to be our last one from Pear. According to our, according to, for example, a healing modality called holographic kinetics, or many others, we have to go back in time to where the true cause to the effect was originally created in order to be able to change that reality in the past to heal in the present. Do you or the A's agree that this is always necessary? I don't know the answer to that. I know for humanity the sinking of Atlantis was a huge game changer for humanity as we know our, ourselves today because of what happened there. And humanity was promised or was given assurances uh, by a friendly race who, who didn't step up and keep their word. Now, I, I know that that's around Atlantis. Now, if there was something else beyond that, further back, I'm not aware of it. But that is a really, really good question. That's a really, really good question. and. Uh, I'm going to have to ask and get back to you on that. Okay, that, that's all I can do is ask and get back to you on that. I won't forget that question. That's really, really good. Well done, whoever asked that question. Well done. That's from well done. Pear, from Pear, P E R. Um, that's wonderful. Yes, a very good one. Uh, yeah. The, another thing is it, that reminds me of the camera that you spoke about. Uh, that the A's use for healing. You know, they take a holographic picture of you and then wind it back. Right. And then re-imprint you with the energy of that moment, that frequency. Um, I wonder, do they have a planetary version of that? I, I'm sorry, ask the question again. I was, I was reading the a holographic question. The holographic camera. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, the holographic camera that the A's use to heal each other. Right. Right. Um, d uh, is there a planetary version of that? Yes. Something that is bigger yes. scale so that yes. you can heal a planet? Yes. yes, there is. Okay. Now, yeah. you read a question. No, no, wait, wait, wait. I was reading a question from Lori. Why would anyone attempt to remove themselves from quantum entanglement? We are all in, 
inextricably connected into this web of dynamic energy. Is this removal even possible? Energy-wise, no. You can't remove. However, collective consciousness creates a reality. That's a holograph. They can be removed from a holograph. Okay, that doesn't mean they disintegrate and they no longer exist. That energy doesn't exist. It's not what it means. But they can be removed from a holograph uh, or a collective group consciousness. That can occur. That Those type of things can occur. And that holograph, that collective consciousness, continues to evolve and in many cases often heals itself naturally, holistically, once this influential energy is removed from it. This energy here becomes separate and has to be treated separately in a different way so that it can heal itself. I hope I've, hope I've explained that. Um, um, they need to be rehabilitation. I don't know all the scientific languages, I'm sorry. Uh, but that was a really good question, Laurie, thank you. And um, uh, do the norms that the A's live by exist as a byproduct of revolution into the existence in 5D, or is it that they live? Oh, I lost the question. All right, that was from Mike Kelly. All right, guys, I got to go because I'm in a different library and they're pretty strict. <laughs> okay. I look well, like a nice strict library. Thank you very much, Alex. Okay, guys, I'll see you next in two weeks. Thank you for joining us on this extraordinary journey of self-discovery and cosmic enlightenment with Alex Collier. Your support means the world to us. If you found this video insightful, please show your appreciation by giving it a thumbs up, subscribing to our channel, and clicking the bell icon to receive notifications for future uploads. Doing so lets you stay connected with the latest cosmic revelations and helps us spread Alex Collier's profound teachings to a broader audience. Remember, every like, subscription, and bell click can awaken more minds and ignite a collective shift in consciousness. We encourage you to share your thoughts, reflections, and questions in the comments below as your engagement fuels the expansion of knowledge and fosters a vibrant community of truth seekers. Together, we can uncover the hidden truths of the universe and embark on a journey of cosmic transformation. Until we meet again, keep seeking, growing, and shining your light in the vast cosmic tapestry. If you would like to see Andromedan contactee Alex Collier live via video stream, we host an online seminar every Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. For more information and dates of upcoming online seminars, please visit alexcollier.org. Please watch one of the above videos to find out more about Alex's knowledge.